Well, all right. Hello, everybody. Let me get this uh, get this out of the way. All right. I've had a lot of uh, friends want to get into digital art, and uh, so I keep promising to make some little tutorial videos. And uh, my software of choice is Autodesk Sketchbook. Now I used to pay a subscription for the Autodesk Sketchbook Pro membership, but now, luckily for everybody, it's 100% free. All the features, everything, all the stuff I used to pay for, you now have at your fingertips for free. So, the first thing I want to show you is you have all these different features, right? Uh, right up here in your window, you have your toolbar, which is right up here. This is your toolbar. This has a lot of different little uh, line tools, little ellipse tools, perspective tools, and my favorite right here, the symmetry tool. Uh, these are just things I would take my time and play with them. Uh, they all have little different features. Like for instance, uh, if I just draw a, a smiley face right here. I can grab this tool right here and then I can stretch it out give it like a 3d look pretty cool stuff pretty cool stuff right nice all right now speaking of tools this button right here is gonna be your best friend this is the undo tool so if you mess something up you just hit undo and it will only go back so many steps so I mean you do have to be careful but you can play with your your shapes and everything and I don't do a whole lot of this uh, but it is there like if you need to stretch something into place or or make it look right it's there so we're going to turn this tool off and then I'm going to erase that guy Oh, speaking of eraser, on your uh, if you're using an XP10 tablet or most Wacom's or, or any kind of tablet, on your stylus, the pen uh, usually if you click the top button on your on your stylus, it will switch from the brushes to the eraser. All right. So over here is the brush library, and these are all the brushes. And then some. And what I mean by and then some. Because all these. A, a lot of these brushes come with the software. But you can also go out there. Uh, there's forums. And there's uh, on the Autodesk support page. You can actually download these other brush sets. And then you can add them to your library. Simply by clicking on, on whichever brush set you want. I always like to go to the very bottom one so I know that the, the brushes that I'm going to import are going to be on the bottom. This little circle right here, you click on it. You're going to go down here to import brushes. And then uh, these are the files of all the brushes that I've downloaded. And as you can see, it's a lot, right? I have downloaded a lot. So you know, we're going to select this watercolor. And now right here at the bottom of my set I got my cool little watercolor brushes and you can see sketchbook does a really good job of of mimicking paint you know trying to do what paint does digitally so you got your brushes here now these two little things here are called your pucks now this puck here is your color puck so whatever color you want your brush or your pencil or whatever to be, you're going to select the color and then you got all the gradients. So you're going to select the color. Bam. 
there it is and look how it, it mimics the paint and uh, say um, I was drawing you know just had all kinds of stuff and I was like ooh this little color right here I want to use that you grab your eyedropper boom right there now you've got that color right there so piece of cake right and also you can erase certain colors uh, by using this eraser button I don't use that a lot but that is a fun thing to do now this puck here is your brush puck and what this puck does left and right you you click on the puck you hold it down right makes your brush bigger left makes it smaller and then also up makes it the flow the opacity sometimes it's called flow sometimes it's called opacity but it's kind of how how much paint you want to lay down and how thick now also a feature of of most modern tablets is that uh, I can stroke lightly and get very little paint even with it turned up to a hundred percent but the harder I push down the more paint it really is very very reactive I know uh, Wacom's kind of the king of the mountain but uh, I do prefer XP pen uh, tablets and right here it's just kind of your default set uh, you can set this to any brush set up here that you like so now over here is a very important tool this is your layer editor uh, and layers will become very important to you when you're doing digital artwork and you guys have all seen me do the Bob Ross stuff right so I, it would be very very hard to do it without layers so let's say we let's do a little quick Bob Ross kind of deal and uh, we're gonna make it like a sunny day so right here the background this is the very base background color you can change that to whatever you want so we're gonna have kind of a blue sky I'm gonna grab white in my little fan brush right here and uh, we'll throw in some clouds right over that little ghost of that happy face that I didn't get erased and like I said very very reactive brushes and uh, again if I turn the flow up they come out a lot thicker I don't have to push nearly as hard if I turn the flow down gives me a little bit more control as to what I'm doing here put a couple up here in the corners just a nice sunny day look at that we just want that one old cloud just floating out over there in the background. You can barely see him, right? So now th this is our very farthest background layer. And uh, I can't help it. I'm going to smooth these clouds out just a little bit with these smudge brushes. Can't help myself. Alright. It's not an official painting. We're just playing. So this is our very background layer. Let me get back on topic. Now what I'm going to do is as I get closer to the viewer, to myself, uh, you're going to add layers. So say now we want some, some mountains way off in the background. Now you guys remember the Bob's Golden Rules, right? The farther it is away... The less detail you have and also the lighter it is things get darker as you move in closer there we go and then we will uh, we'll throw in just a little bit of a different color just to kind of mix them as we get closer and closer Alright, so we got some, some little mountains here. Now I like to grab these little uh, 
little fan brush kind of things. These just kind of mimic having a dry brush, uh, almost like you know Bob with his uh, his palette knife, how he would scrape across the paint. And just gives a little bit of a little bit of depth out there. Just a little bit of hints of details. You don't want actual details. Now here's a, here's another really cool thing. These layers all have this little slider bar right here, and I can turn up or down the visibility, the opacity of that layer. So I'm going to turn it down just a little bit because I want it to really fade out there into the distance. Now we're getting a little bit closer to ourselves, so we're going to add another layer. And now what I like to do, and I, and if you go straight black, uh, you will have to go back and uh, and add some color because you don't want it straight black yet. But we can get there pretty quick. Now I like to. Uh, if you've watched my stuff, you know I like to do these little, little bays, little, uh, little shoreline kind of things. And now I'm just using the eraser to kind of clean the lines up a little bit, I'm trying to hide the uh, the brush strokes. So we've got this this bank that's just kind of across the way from where we're sitting. And uh, now I'm going to take a brush. I'm going to add a, a little bit of color and I'm going to turn this way down because I don't want a whole lot of color. We just want a little bit of color over here. You know, and the sun's kind of sitting on that one side. Now another cool feature of, we'll clean that up a little bit. Another cool feature of sketchbook and these brushes and I, I can't stress this enough. If you really want to bring out uh, your art and make it look nice, these little textured brushes right here, they're just like the ones you would buy at Hobby Lobby, the sponge brushes. Same concept. Uh, you know, that's way too dark though. I would say very light touch down in the single digits and then you can start bringing in some of this little detail and it will really take it from looking like a uh, some kind of a digital artwork into something else all right now right here at the bottom of our uh, our little shoreline here Again, I'm going to take this dry brush and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and we're going to drag this down just like just like old Bob would have done on his show, right? Because we got to get that reflection in there here in a second. Now, remember I talked about the tools up here. One of my favorite tools is right here see these little shapes but the most important one for me is this one right here that's your line tool if you want to create a straight line uh, you need that tool and I use it a lot now see I can drag straight across these reflections I can start smoothing them out by using the lines Gives it a much better look than if I tried to freehand this. Get that nice little reflection in there. And again, this is just a very basic, simple drawing, painting, however you want to call this. We're not going to get all super detailed on this. So that's kind of our, our shoreline that's across the way there. Now, we're getting closer again, right? So we're gonna add a new layer. Now this one can be pretty dark. Don't forget to turn that line tool off. Cause I do all the time. <laughs> 
So we're just adding a random shape that's right here in front of us. And uh, if you've kind of, uh, you know, maybe messed up in the background there, because I'm going to show you how to fix it. Uh, we'll go. Well, you can go back in time on your layers. Now, um, I've I've recently had to uh, redo my uh, brush set because uh, when it went from being a paid service to a free service, I had to reinstall the whole software for whatever reason. I don't know why they made me do that, but so I don't have all my brushes uh, back in here that I, that I used to use. But see how this shore is uh, is dark. I like to use this little oil pen. And we can put some some little grass and foliage in here. Just a quick little jerk up, and then if you really drop the size of this down, then you can you know start putting you some little grass and stuff like that out there. But they do have a, when I'm in a hurry, and I'm trying to draw one of these quick, uh, like on a live stream or something, um, they do have a stencil that does a whole lot of this work for you. And I realize some people uh, might think that that takes away a little bit, but I really don't think it does. Uh, it's still your artwork. We'll put a little, put a little flower right here. A little weird looking flower. Alright. There it is right there. So now again. Right there. I'm just filling that in. That was that was looking a little awkward to me. So again, we're not we're not getting all super detailed. This is just uh a tutorial on how to use this I'm not showing you a picture to draw so now look what we got going on here we've got we've got this background that is blue uh, we've got our clouds on this layer we've got these far away mountains on this layer we've got the far shoreline here and then the, the one that's right in our face is right here so if you look back here see how that doesn't look right, does it? Doesn't quite look right. So what we can do, and this is the beauty of digital art, is you can go and grab that that layer that has that uh, far away mountains and stuff on it. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to fix it. We're going to fuzz that up a little bit. If I can find my brushes. There we go. So I'm going to expand that brush out a little bit. I'm going to turn that flow up to about 4%. Get my line tool. And you'll notice that when I do this, it only affected that far away layer. See, it will not do anything with these layers out here. And now you've got this nice, smooth, misty looking far away shoreline out there. I can turn that off and just go back and start kind of blending this stuff in. And it will only affect that layer that you have selected and you can see uh, you can kind of go back in time and, and fix the stuff that you think you've messed up now on this very bottom layer where the clouds are uh, I can do this I can go there because nothing else will be affected except for the this layer that has the clouds it's even behind our little misty mountains out here now when I do a water reflection, I just grab uh, like random colors. But for this, because it is such a nice clear day, I'm just going to throw a little bit of white out there. And you don't have to get super uh, intense. I'm going to grab that line tool again. But this time I'm going to turn that intensity up a little bit. And then we start getting our little water reflections out there. And it'll really make a nice water effect to kind of kind of show those clouds in the sky reflecting off the 
off the water and just smooth it out get it to where you like it so you got something like that going on and then we also back here on our layer with this far away shoreline you know, we're going to take a little a little detail brush a little oil brush and we're just going to make it smaller and then I'm just going to Oh, I got the line too long. See, look there. And now we're going to use the undo button. <laughs> so now we're just going to go out here. And I'm really just laying in this little highlight right here on the bottom. Uh, you'll find that it really will help you uh, make your water look better. I'll throw a few little highlights out here in the water. And then uh, we will take our little brush again. Turn the line tool on. I'm going to turn that intensity, the flow, down to about three on this one. So we're going to really have to, to work and pull because I want it to keep a lot of the shape. I'll turn the size down a little bit. We'll get out here. Alright. And again, this is not going to be some super detailed painting. And we'll go up here. And this airbrush is also one of my favorite brushes. Uh, way back down here in our first layer again. I'm going to add a little bit of, uh, of contrast to the color of this water so uh, this is what we'll do we're on this bottom layer but I don't want to mess up the stuff that I already have done there so on this bottom layer if I add a new layer at this point it will be between the clouds and our original water in this far shoreline and uh, there I go leaving my line too long again so we're going to just add a little bit of color up into this water. Just a little bit different colors. Just because we think it looks cool. As a matter of fact, I want that a little bit brighter. Yeah, there we go. Nice little, nice little colors. And again, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take the uh, the tool, the little brush, our little blending brush. It's my favorite brush right there, I believe. That is my favorite brush. We're going to turn our line tool back on, and then we're just going to kind of start blending all these across. I'm actually going to turn that flow up, because I really want these to, to blend and mix in with each other. Now, you can play with this and uh, come up with your own style, however you want to do it. So now we've got all these layers, and and we've got a nice little scene here. And you can play with this, and you can add details, and you can you can practice playing with all the different little textured brushes, which I highly recommend because they're they're super fun to play with. Uh, but the the main thing today is just just focus on how to use your layers. Uh, you get your background. That's the clouds. That's the color on the water. That's our far away mountains. That's the far shoreline, this one right here. And this is what's right in front of our face. Just start playing with these things uh, and have fun with it. And remember, you can always undo it. And uh, if you don't like it, you can, you can always just erase it and start over. But very quickly, you know, once you start getting used to this, you can do some digital artwork pretty fast. Now, another one of my big favorite brushes to play with and, and you guys have seen me use this several times uh, let me find it all my brushes are in different places now this is a glow brush now I love this glow brush because it's like a big old highlighter now what we're gonna do is uh, there's several ways you can play with it so I'm on this very top top layer if I just uh, 
turn the line tool off dummy if I just start uh, throwing it down and then you know you got the sun in the sky up there uh, but what I want to do is go way down here to the bottom layer and just kind of give everything a little misty background look we're going to turn that intensity up maybe have the sun kind of kind of peeking up down there something like that turn the turn the flow way down again that way we can play with our clouds a little bit here now isn't that a cool effect doesn't that look good and you can also you know hide a little bit of that down here underneath your water get everything looking nice and warm <laughs> So up here on our very top layer, since we've got this nice warm little either sunrise or sunset going on, I'm going to grab a little bit of orange and just kind of start sticking a little bit out there. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to go crazy. Just some hints. Just some hints. And then uh, I like to go red. And I'm just kind of hitting some spots again you don't have to you don't have to go crazy with anything in a little purple and we'll get this nice little effect right here and then since this is a layer all by itself and you see these little brush marks out here uh, what you do when you get those brush marks and what we're actually going to throw a little dark purple up here kind of in the sky and i'm going to show you what we're going to do here so what we'll do because all these colors and these highlights are on a separate layer by themselves on the very top of this i'm going to take my blending brush my smudge brush we're going to turn it up to now this thing this is a very powerful brush so about three percent and then we're just going to start working this in i'm just going to start blending two hairs and some air as Bob would say and do remember that uh, these tablets are reactive to how hard you're pushing and how fast you're you're moving your hand so and now we got all this blended in and we got rid of all those old brush strokes and now we've got a nice little weird looking portrait here and the main thing is is uh, go up here grab this little pen whichever kind of pen you want to use it doesn't matter find your brush find your style find your signature make sure you sign these things and make sure you're proud of them I don't care what they look like don't ever compromise make sure that your style is your own and enjoy yourself relax this stuff is not hard I will always be there if you need me to to walk you through something we'll do one of these together and then don't forget to save your work so we're going to save and uh we'll just you can see all the creepy stuff i do in it and stuff's pretty creepy we're just going to call this bob Rock, brt all right now here's the other thing when you watch my live shows you see me do magic time and all magic time is i run my art through a filter and it's just like an Instagram filter or a Facebook filter uh, and and I don't care what anybody thinks about me doing that it I like to run my artwork through a filter because you will see that it will bring these colors together gives me a lot more control over over the finished product here so what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up in a my favorite program is called Photor. And there's nothing special about Photor. It's just the one uh, that I've played with the most. It's the one I'm the most comfortable with. It's the software I've used so much I know what it's going to do, right? So I know you got all these different effects you can throw on there. But I know that this Nostalgic is the one that I'm going to use. 
most of my landscapes uh, I'm going to use nostalgic and you can see how it just kind of brings everything together makes it look a little bit better and then uh, I'm going to turn that sharpness back up and I'm going to add the saturation is your the amount of color right so we're going to turn that contrast right here down just a little bit turn the color all the way up because I'm, I'm weird like that now the temperature like you can set the sky on fire you can make it a cold morning I want it about like that right there and see how it kind of brings all those different colors together that we had up in the sky very cool now you can kind of darken it with a vignette here you can make it look like a you know or you can make it super bright like you got a hangover <laughs> I'm going to darken it up just a little bit because I want this to kind of look like either a sunset or a sunrise. The tint uh, gets weird. You can make, you can add the little rose colors and I think I do want a little bit of red in that sky though. So maybe about like that right there. Of course the darkness and light, you know, you can play with it. But again, there's no right or wrong answer here. You just play with it make it your own have fun with it and uh, don't ever compromise on your style or your vision don't try to draw like anybody else just be you you'll have a good time and I hope this helps everybody see I saved my work we're gonna close photo tour we're gonna go back in the sketchbook we're gonna open that one that we just saved what we call that BRT thing and look at there we got a nice little painting in a very short amount of time and I hope I hope you have fun with it if you need help reach out let me know you can uh, you can really surprise yourself with this have fun with it y'all take care love y'all I'll see you in the next video